What's up, Trainiacs? Exciting, exciting news here. Wahoo has just announced, well, here it is, Friday, June 29th, but by the time you see it, it will just be announced to the public, but I'm recording this early because we just went through a conference call about all the new product announcements that Wahoo is going to release on July 8th at Eurobike. I got the sneak peek. So, Wahoo announced, am I centered? Announced, I would say, four main product updates in the end of June. And of these product updates, two of them are fairly decent upgrades to existing products, and the other two are brand new products, one of which I wanna get. So let's get into them. First, the fourth generation kicker, one of the big things is that it's updated its flywheel. That flywheel is the thing that spins, not going onto your drivetrain, and by having a bigger flywheel, you're gonna get more inertia, so it's a more realistic road feel. And they ended up going with a 16 pound flywheel because apparently that's a really nice balance between that good amount of inertia and being too hard to get going off the line. Next, they also announced that the sound of the 2018 kicker is going to be nearly silent. And comparing the kicker that I had for 2017 to the Cyclops hammer, it was that high pitch that the kicker had that the Cyclops hammer doesn't. And apparently that high pitch is what they really work to reduce and it's almost silent. And they compare it to the decibel level of a library. That's wild. When I did my sound testing with the 2017 kicker, sound levels were somewhere around 74, 75 decibels. That's kind of like me talking right now. It's, it's conversational, but when you start getting up to really high powers, it had that really distinct whine, which apparently is what they've worked to reduce. Next is that they've increased the max wattage to around 2,200 watts. Previous generation of the kicker was around 2,000. Most of us are never gonna see that, so while it's an update, it's not something that's gonna be a game changer. Next thing that is kind of a game changer is they've released an all new smart trainer, the Kicker Core, which is kind of filling that, that gap that is currently in between the Kicker itself at $1,200 and the Snap, which is the more budget-focused trainer at $599. The Kicker Core comes out at $899, but on top of that, you have to buy a cassette for somewhere around 80, 90 bucks, or if you've got a spare one lying around, whereas the main Kicker that is $300 more comes with the cassette already. Add on the cost of a cassette, so you're basically paying like $220 less than the Kicker itself, but with the differences that the max wattage is 1800 watts on the kicker core as opposed to 2000 watts for the 2017 kicker and 2200 watts for the 2018 kicker. It has the same plus or minus 2% accuracy on that wattage, but there is only a 16% max grade as opposed to a 20% max grade on the kicker and the flywheel is only 12 pounds. So you're going to be getting less top end wattage, which eh, at 1800, you're probably never gonna max it out. You are getting less of a potential highest grade, which you probably will come close to maxing it out, but the road feel is going to be a fair bit different because you don't have that nice big flywheel that they promoted so much in the 2018 kicker. It's only for about, call it, even at the best case scenario, $300 less. I don't know if this is gonna be a groundbreaker or not. I think they're just rounding out the product offerings between entry level, mid level, and high end level. Next, they updated us on the Kicker Climb, basically announcing it as an all new product because while it was announced last year at Eurobike, there've been significant production delays. Apparently what was happening, and I experienced just a tiny amount of this while I was at Interbike last year, is that the change in grade 
while the kicker climb was mounted to your fork and you're riding through Zwift and you go through grades, it was almost too jerky and a little bit too noisy. It was like, it was too mechanical. Apparently it is in production now finally and is going to be shipping sometime around mid July. And there are a couple of updates for the final production numbers that it has a max downgrade of minus 10% and a max upgrade of plus 20% think that that was minus eight and plus 20 originally. So small little update there, but the big update is that it actually exists and you can probably purchase it, we hope. Next, the coolest thing, and this is the most, I would say drastic innovation that they've done is the kicker headwind. And this is a variable speed smart fan that goes in front of your bike. Whereas a lot of people will put fans like shop fans all over or all above. And I'm actually looking at doing something like that right now. So this might be good timing. If you're watching this Wahoo, I'd love to try it out. But there are a few things that make this fan unique. One is that it either pairs to any smart trainer. So I can make this work with the Cyclops hammer. It's not proprietary to just Wahoo products or if you don't even have a smart trainer, it'll pair to any AMP Plus device. So it'll pair to your heart rate data, it'll pair to your cadence sensor, or your power pedals if that's what you're working off of. And as the fan ends up sensing that you're working harder, it'll increase the airflow, which is actually designed to have a really narrow airflow about the size of a rider, and it's set to go six feet out from your bike, so it does take up a fairly significant footprint, but you can say tilt it up if you need to do that. And that wind flow is going to get as fast as 30 miles an hour. That's wild and be like, and the price point for this, if you're comparing it to a job site fan that is somewhere around anywhere from 20 to $150, going to be on the higher end of that. It's coming in at $250 US. It's going to be available in mid-August is what they're saying, but I'm not going to place any bets on that based off of what we saw with the climb. However, this is a lot more simple technology, so I'd say that that's fairly realistic. But looking at, say, if you were to buy a really high-end fan, it's going to cost somewhere around two, three, four hundred dollars $400, but the addition of the smart compatibility, the ability for you to have that more road-like feel, which tends to be where the world is going right now with the increase in cyclists getting hit, with the specific nature that you can design your workouts on the trainer much better than you can out on the road because you don't have lights, you don't have potholes, you don't have unexpected hills, you can control every little variable. This is just gonna make things a lot more enjoyable because you got a fan blowing in your face, but that fan is not just at a constant wattage. And as we've seen with virtual reality, the more aspects of an experience that you can make that basically match what you're seeing with what your brain is sensing, the more your brain is going to be able to basically interpret it as real. So I think that this is a really fair deal and a good addition to a lot of pain caves. Like I say, Wahoo, I like the sounds of this. I have a perfectly good pain cave here that is fanless at the moment. So you go Trainiacs, you heard it here first. Apparently everything is available by the time you see this on the Wahoo website. Things won't be shipping immediately, but over the rest of the summer, it's going to all be shipping out. So now you know. Check it out. If you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed and you like this inside Intel, hit the like button. Later, Trainiacs.